Barsk by Lawrence M. Schoen. Liked it a lot, won't read the next book. Barsk is a story about elevated elephants and actually elevated animals in general. Um, and it's kind of, you can kind of see it as if like there's a zoo where all of the animals roam free except for the elephants and they have their own enclosure and none of the other animals are allowed in there. That's kind of how Barsk is set up. There's one, um, there's one planet just with elephants and then all of the other animals get to live wherever and all of the other planets. Um, and there's some politics going into that that I don't really need to go into, but the main idea of this story, and I guess like the biggest thing to understand is that when the fonts die, they, um, instead of just like killing over and dying, they get this feeling inside that it's time to go and they get on a boat and sail off into the water towards um, like basically the afterlife. The other concept that is pretty important is that there are some people who have like this reaction to a drug that allows them to talk to the people who are dead and they can um, like basically call their like spirit back to, to communicate with them. First, I wanna talk about the elevated animals. I picked up the book originally because I was really excited about the elevated elephants. In the first chapter though, I found out that there were other animals and for some reason that kind of turned me off to it at first. And I feel like it's one of those things about expectations. I expected elevated elephants and find out there's something else and now I'm not as interested which is weird, but um, I don't know, it's just what it is. I also thought that the elephants that had a POV, the fonts is what they're called, that had a POV, were a lot more interesting than the other animals that had POVs. Although there were other animals that were interesting, just um, when it was inside the other animals' heads, it wasn't as interesting. I didn't feel as big of a connection to their that specific animal's like way of life and culture. Um, though there were some moments that were really, really cool um, because animals just act differently than humans do. And being inside their heads were, it was just like, they just acted differently. Like for example, a fish getting into water, except there were no fish. I use that example to avoid spoilers. Um, but a fish getting into water is gonna react very differently than a human. And that was cool. I wanted to mention specifically the main character. He was very endearing. I loved his POVs. I think like the majority of the time that I was reading from the main character's POV, Joral, I just really enjoyed it. Um, there were a few exceptions. One of them specifically I remember was in the, like basically the very middle. The next thing that I wanted to mention was pacing. I thought the beginning, the beginning had good pacing. The first couple chapters were solid. Um, it got a little slow after the first couple of chapters picked up again. And then there was a part in the middle that I, um, I really struggled through. It was hard to see where the, the overall story was going and not seeing really the direction was made it so that I was not as invested in the story and, um, and kind of got a little bored in the middle. Kind of going along with that, that um, there was a lot of setup and there were a lot of pieces that fit together. And so I feel like there's two types of, of books. There's the kind where you're getting all the pieces and you don't even know that you're getting all the pieces. You're just really enjoying the story and then they all come together at the end. And then there's other books where you know you're getting the pieces and you don't know how they fit in. And the second way was how this book was. I could see that I had pieces, but I couldn't quite put them together. And it was kind of frustrating as the book went along that I couldn't see like the direction that we were going. I was okay with not knowing the answers, but I didn't like that I couldn't really piece things together at all. However, once it did get pieced together, it was very, very satisfying. I really enjoyed the ending. It was one of those books where the resolution leaves you very, very satisfied, but wait, 
I have thousands of questions still. This is where it actually comes in that I would not pick up the second book. After I read the book, I immediately went online to find out like if there was another book because I had all these questions I wanted them answered. And I found out that there was a second book, but that it was supposed to be a trilogy. A trilogy? <laughs> it was supposed to be a trilogy and they're no longer making the third book. Um, or like, I guess the publisher's not supporting it, so maybe it'll be published later. I really don't know um, exactly the whole thing, but the author himself said that at the moment there, it was like basically scrapped. And um, I, so from where I stood at that moment, I said, I was satisfied with the ending. Yes, I had a lot of questions and I would like to read more, but no, I do not want to read more just to have more questions to not have the story finished. So I decided I'm satisfied. I'm going to stop there. Um, so I would actually really recommend this book, especially to people who um, like kind of the a sciency magic system and or even just science fiction. Um, but it definitely teeters on the line. So it's not like it's not going to be like The Martian where it's just like really hard science. It's a little bit more um, on the magic side of things, on the fantasy side of science fiction. Um, so I recommend it, it to you if you like that middle ground and you like kind of a fusion of technology and magic. That's it for this video. I'll see you later.